and welcome to a broadcast here in the Authentic Married Woman. I am your host, Karen Seitz, and I am a coach and a mentor to teach women how to be the source of their own happiness, how to find their wholeness within themselves and untangle themselves from their husbands so that they can feel confident and grounded in who they are as a way to resolve the issues in their marriage. So one of the most common complaints that I get from women that I work with, um, who I talk with, are that they feel really lost from who they are in their marriage. They feel like they've lost their identity. They feel like they don't have their own dreams and hopes anymore. And when that happens within us, when we lose our sense of self, when we become tangled up in our marriage, tangled up in our husbands, we don't have a self. We, we remain empty on the inside, feeling unhappy, um, not liking who we are. And it's that in ourselves, that relationship we have with ourselves that gets projected out into our marriage, out onto our husbands and keeps us trapped. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. We're talking about if you spot it, you got it. And so we're talking about one of my favorite, favorite subjects today um, about projection. So projection is one of my favorite concepts and working on a marriage and working on yourself and in your own personal development because it's very black and white. Um, it's very cut and dry. It cuts to the chase. Um, it cuts through the BS and allows you to see what's really going on that you can't see being stuck in a projection. So that's where we're going today in this video. And I just want to take a second one to say a welcome to the new members coming into the group and to also share with the new members our framework for this group and for our message and, and what I'm here to teach and help women with. And so uh, we call these our three principles and these really set the framework for what we're talking about. Um, for what works to actually create long-term permanent changes in your marriage. And so the first principle is that you are 100% responsible for your happiness. No one and no thing can make you happy. Your husband can't make you happy. Your marriage can't make you happy. You have to find happiness within yourself. Happiness is an inside job. It does not come from out here, um, but we get disillusioned and we look for our happiness in our marriage and our husbands and other things in our lives. And, and again, we remain unfulfilled on the inside. So if you want to feel good about yourself, you want to be happy from within, to be content in your life, in your marriage, in your different relationships, that is an inside job that you must do for yourself. So that's our first principle. The second principle is that you are the only person you can change. You can't change your husband and there's nothing your husband can do to change you for you. If you want to experience change in your marriage, then you need to be the one to look in the mirror and to work on yourself to change, to see that change in your external world, to see that in your marriage, to see that in your different relationships. And the third principle is that being an authentic married woman or being an authentic woman, period, is about having a relationship with yourself and feeling good about who you are. So when you have a relationship with yourself, you know who you are. You haven't lost your sense of self. You haven't lost your sense of identity. And you can be grounded in who you are and show up vulnerably in your marriage, in your relationship as yourself which is the foundation to any healthy relationship. The foundation to any healthy relationship is the willingness to be yourself and show up as yourself vulnerably. If you're not doing that, then it is impossible to have a healthy marriage or have a healthy relationship with anyone. So those are the three principles that set the framework for this group that set the framework for our message. And it allows you to put the focus on yourself to see the things that you can change within yourself so that you are empowered and not stuck in the problems that you're having in your marriage anymore. The problems that you're having in your marriage, feeling ignored, feeling unappreciated, uh, lack of trust, lack of communication, all of those things are symptoms of your relationship with yourself and what's going on in you that you're not seeing, that if you worked on you and you changed those things, change those things within yourself, you would see dramatic results in your marriage and your whole 
life. So that is why that second principle is so important that you are the only person that you have any control over to change. Um, it, it is because it's it's true. You can only change yourself. And you when you work on you, that's where you begin to see the changes you want in your life. So let's dive into if you spot it, you got it. So again, today we are talking about projection and projection is a key issue in a marriage that never gets dealt with in the books that you read and in couples counseling and in individual counseling. Um, we, we don't often look at projection and projection is key. If you are going to solve the issues in your marriage, you have to see what you're projecting onto your husband and then be willing to look in the mirror and see how that's you. Because when you can change, again, when you can change what's going on in you, then you will see something very, very different in your husband and in your marriage. So what it means is if you spot it, you got it, is those things that you see in your husband that um, upset you, that cause you to feel hurt, that create an emotional reaction within yourself that trigger you. And, and how I define a trigger is anything external that creates some sort of internal reaction. Um, so those things that create that internal emotional reaction within you about your husband, those are actually projections of your own behavior and the things that you are not seeing in yourself. And so in order to experience those changes in your marriage, and, and to experience your husband differently, you need to be able to look at what you're projecting on your husband, what you're projecting on your marriage, that's actually you, that you need to work on and that you need to change. And your husband is just a mirror showing you those behaviors in yourself. So the myth we're busting today is that your husband's actions that bother you the most are the things that need to change in order for you to be happy in your marriage and happy in your relationship with your husband. And what we're looking at is no, the things that bother you the most, and I think that that phrase bother you um, is really, really important. It's the behaviors that bother you. Like I said, the behaviors that cause an emotional reaction internally, that those things that bother you the most are actually the things that you need to look at within yourself and change within yourself. So let's look at some of the most common things that we're bothered by in our husbands um, and, and, and then start to look at, okay, how can we start to turn these around on ourselves? Not to beat ourselves up, not to make ourselves wrong, but so that you're actually empowered to do something about it. Because until you can see the things that you're hiding from yourself that are creating the symptoms that you don't want in your marriage, you can't do anything about them. So this is meant to have a constructive way to look at yourself, to see the things you're not seeing about yourself, not to beat yourself up, but so that you can actually change and get a different result in your marriage and get a different result in your life and feel good within yourself and be able to be happy, to be able to find your happiness within. So here are some of the common complaints that you have about your husband and, and thinking that he's the problem, that your husband doesn't tell the truth, that your husband never follows through with his tasks or things that he's agreed to do, that your husband is emotionally unavailable, your husband is irresponsible with money, your husband is a poor communicator, he withdraws and shuts down and retreats from the relationship, your husband is controlling that your husband has double standards. He can do what he wants, but you can't do what you want. That your husband is boring and uninteresting. That your husband is checked out and disengaged and your husband acts like a child. These are probably the most common complaints that I get from the women that I work with, that I see within the Facebook group and in the comments that are made on some of the posts, um, that this is what we complain about, ladies, and our husbands. So again, that they don't tell the truth. They don't follow through. They're emotionally unavailable. They are irresponsible with money, poor communicators, withdrawn, shut down. Um, they, they're controlling, they have double standards, they're boring and uninteresting, um, they're checked out and disengaged, and they act like a child. So we need to start to understand, okay, so what is a projection? We hear that word a lot, um, it's thrown around a lot, but what actually is it? So a projection is how we perceive others in the world around us 
based on that which we deny about ourselves. So I'm going to read that again. A projection is how we perceive others in the world based on that which we deny about ourselves. So if you've had a chance to watch some of the videos in the Facebook group, or if you haven't, um, I've got a list of videos in the new member welcome post that I highly recommend going and watching. There's a ton of value in the videos that we have in this group, and you can learn a lot just by watching the videos. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, but if you've been listening to the videos, then you know we talk a lot about defense mechanisms, how as humans, we don't wanna be exposed, we don't want to change, and especially we don't wanna to have to look at ourselves and what's going on inside of us internally and have to change. We are terrified of that. Um, so we don't wanna be exposed. We don't want to have to be the ones to change. And we don't wanna face emotional discomfort. We especially, do not want to face the things we do not like about ourselves, the things that we might be ashamed of, the things that we see as wrong inside of us, the things that we push away and deny because it's it's very vulnerable to be honest with ourselves and see those things about ourselves. So the mind is constantly working to protect ourselves from having to be exposed, from having to see the things that we don't like about ourselves. And we have a lot of different protective mechanisms or defense mechanisms to do that. And, and one that we talk about a lot is victim. So we talk a lot about victim, which is blaming something or someone else for your experience so that you don't have to change because when it's happening to you, you don't have to look at yourself. You don't have to look at the consequences of your own actions and behaviors or how you feel about yourself. Um, it, it allows you to hide essentially. And so projection is just another protective mechanism that allows us to hide. It's, it's a way to deny the things we do not like about ourselves and put them on the people in our lives or the world around us so we don't have to take responsibility. We don't have to be exposed. Um, so the things that we, we hate the most or dislike the most in others are the very things that we deny most about ourselves. So when I first started to work on myself in the ways that I'm sharing with all of you and, and that I teach to my clients, I had to start looking at victim. And most of us really don't want to see ourselves as victims. Um, and because it's very exposing and we often have a very negative connotation with victim mentality um, that we see that in other people, but we don't want to be anything like that. So when I was start first starting to look at myself in this way, and then the ways that I am I'm teaching to you guys um, and sharing with all of you, when I started to have to look at victim in myself, I was dead set and dead sure that I was not a victim uh, because I couldn't stand people who had victim mentality. That was my whole story. And I tried to stay away from people who had victim mentality. I would push them out of my life. I would stay away from them. I wouldn't engage in relationships with people with victim mentality. I could not stand people with victim mentality, period. And I learned very, very quickly that the reason I could not stand people with victim mentality was because I had so much of it within myself that I did not want to see, that I did not want to confront because I had painted a lovely picture and facade of myself that I had it all put together, that I was happy, that I took responsibility for my life, that I was willing to look at myself. And I, I created this whole facade that I bought into and other people bought into. I used all the books that I read, all the counseling that I did, um, all the spiritual work that I had done and personal development and, and self-growth or personal growth. Um, I took all of that to weave this story about myself that I had it together, again, that I took responsibility for my life, that I felt good about myself, that I was happy and I wore a happy face. And you've probably probably heard me talk about in other videos about the happy pill, um, which is not actually a pill. Uh, it's a way to 
cover up how we're actually feeling about ourselves. It's a way to cover up the things that we don't like about ourselves so we don't have to be exposed to that. So I had a big happy pill and, and a huge facade and never had to look at how I was a victim in my life. I didn't have to look at how much blame I was carrying around towards my husband, how much blame I was carrying around towards my dad, towards my upbringing, towards my sister, um, to different people in my life, and just projected all of that out onto everybody else. My sister is the victim. My dad's a victim. My husband's a victim. The people I work with are victims. That's not me. And that prevented me from being honest with myself and being able to see that within me so I could do something about it and actually change it and then be able to see those results in my life and in my different relationships. So again, projections, just another protective protective mechanism so you don't have to be exposed for what you don't want to know about yourself. And, and these are the things that you hate the most in other people and, and that you deny the most about yourself. And victim was one of those things for me. So what I want you to do is some of the common projections that as women that we put on other women we oftentimes have an easier time seeing those things within ourselves because we're not as tangled up. We're not as codependent um, in those relationships. So it's a lot easier to see those things in other women and, and be able to be honest with ourselves to see how we show up that way in our lives and in our different relationships. So some common projections that we often have as women on other women are victim seeing other women playing the victim, playing the martyr, um, poor me, look at everything I'm doing, I'm getting no help, I'll do it, just let me do it, I've got it. Um, that's an example of being a martyr. Uh, we can see in other women that they're needy or insecure, fake, judgmental, bitchy. We can see those things in other women and we often have an easier time of of seeing those things within ourselves. And again, if you can see it in other people, that means you've got it. You cannot experience something in another person. You can't see something in another person if you don't have it within yourself. Now, you might not be seeing it or you might not know that about yourself because these are the unconscious behaviors that we push down. Again, because we don't want to be exposed. We don't want to have to be the ones to change. We don't want to see these things about ourselves. It's confronting. It's vulnerable. It causes us to need to take our walls down and be humble and be willing to change. And, and most of us are, are pushing all of that away because we don't want to be exposed. We don't want to have to change. But when we're honest with ourselves, then we can slow down and look in our lives and see, okay, where do I play the martyr? Where do I play the victim? Where, where am I needy? How am I insecure? Uh, how am I judgmental and fake? When we can slow down and see those things about ourselves, again, it's not about beating ourselves up or making ourselves wrong. It's understanding we're human and we have all these different ways to protect ourselves. All these things, victim, martyr, being needy, being insecure, fake, judgmental, all of these are just a way to protect ourselves. That's it. We're just trying to protect ourselves from being exposed, from having to change, from having to face that emotional discomfort within ourselves. But when we can when, when we can see it and know, well, if I see it in them, then I've got it in myself, then that gives us a place to start to work on ourselves, to start to change. And then what happens is we become secure in ourselves. We, we become reliant on ourselves. We feel good about ourselves. We're confident. We take responsibility for our lives. Uh, we're being true to who we are. We're being real. We can be accepting and understanding of others, even if we don't agree. And when we've got that going on inside of us, what do you think we're going to project? We're going to start to project those ways in which we feel good about ourselves. We're going to start to project the ways in which we feel strong and, and capable of taking care of ourselves onto those in our lives, onto different relationships, onto the world, and we create a whole new experience of ourselves. That's the power of projection and why I like it so much is it's black and white. If I can see it, and it bothers me. That's the key, again, the key word. If I can see it in someone else, 
and it bothers me or it triggers me and causes me to have an emotional, emotional internal reaction, that means I've got it, plain and simple. So that's the same for you ladies. If you can see it in your husband or you can see it in other women or you can see it in your family members and it bothers you, it triggers you, it causes you to react emotionally, it's black and white. That means it's in you, that it's actually the experience of yourself that you don't want to take responsibility for because it would be exposing. You would have to see something you don't like about yourself and be vulnerable and then ultimately have to change. And those are the things you're protecting yourself from, not because there's anything bad about you or anything wrong about you, but because change is scary. Being vulnerable is scary. It's easier to project. It's easier to have that wall up and live through our projections than it is to look in the mirror and get really honest with ourselves. But for me, that's part of what drew me to this, to what I teach now. It's part of what just clicked with me of like, that makes so much sense. And then I had a path forward. And instead of getting lost and caught up in all the things my husband was doing that I didn't like that bothered me, I could start to use those and turn them around on myself to look in the mirror to change those things about me. And then I started to have a totally different experience of my husband and, and realized those things I projected onto him weren't him. They were me. And I was projecting them onto him and just having them constantly mirrored back. And it was just the circle was going around over and over and over again. So when I had a black and white cut and dry path to say, no, if this bothers you about him, it's actually the experience of yourself. It was very empowering, not disempowering very empowering to be able to change, to be able to create a new reality of myself and then a new reality in my marriage and in my life and in my different relationships. That's how powerful projection is. So it's so much easier with people that we're not as close to, that we're not entangled with, to be able to see things in them and go, oh, I got some of that. I know that about myself. It is a lot harder to do this in our marriage and in our relationship with our husbands. Um, and, and that's because we've become so intertwined. We've become so codependent. And what that means is that as women, one of our core issues, um, men have their own set of issues. So that's really important to know coming into this group, listening to these videos, um, understanding my message is knowing, yeah, men have their responsibilities too. They have things they need to work on in themselves. But again, you can't change that. You have no control over that. This group, what I'm sharing with you is about showing you the things that you have control over to change because you're the only person that you can change. So it doesn't mean that men or, or your husband doesn't have issues or doesn't have his problems. It just means it's futile for you to focus on that. That's where you get stuck. That's where you get so frustrated, so unhappy on the inside, feeling like you're on a hamster wheel, feeling like you're just running up against the same stuff over and over and over and over again. So we've got to shift the perspective, ladies. You've got to start to look at yourself and look at these things. So that's why we're talking about this. They have their own set of issues. We have our own set of issues. Um, so as women, we become very lost in our relationships with men. And if you're willing to go back and, and look at yourself through your life, you can see that pattern. You can see how lost you get as soon as you met someone, as soon as you got into a relationship, it was all about them. You started to change how you dressed. You started to change how you did your hair. You started to change the things you like to do. You changed your hobbies to match that person so that they would like you and you could have that relationship because we're looking for a relationship, we're looking for marriage or to our husbands to fill that void within ourselves, to fill that emptiness or incompleteness that we have within ourselves. We look to them to fill that. So we get very, very lost. I often share about how when I first met my husband, he asked me if I loved hiking or not if I loved hiking, he asked me if I liked hiking and I responded, I love hiking and I had been hiking once when I was five years old in Tennessee where the elevation was like 500 feet. I live in Denver now, my husband and I met here and, and he was talking about like hiking and some serious elevation gains. And my first response was, I love hiking, yet I had never 
really been hiking. I'd gone on, on a walk <laughs> when I was five years old that seemed like a hike because it had a little bit of elevation, but I hadn't been hiking since. And it just came flying out of my mouth because I wanted the relationship. I wanted him. Um, and so I, that's the one of the first moments that I began to lose myself with my husband and, and lose my sense of who I was and being true to myself in the relationship. And so that's what we do. We give ourselves away. We, we lose ourselves and our husbands in the marriage, trying to be who we think we need to be to get what we need in return or what we expect in return or what we want out of the relationship. And what happens is then we become intertwined and enmeshed and we, this is you, this is your husband, you lose your sense of self. And when you lose your sense of self, of course, all the things that bother you about your husband, you're, you're going to project your own experience onto him because you've given your sense of self over to him, over to the relationship. So it's really, really hard for us to see the projections that we have on our husbands and recognize that it's ourselves because we've, you or you've become so convinced that it's him. You've become so convinced and, and created this bulletproof story that he's the problem that you're not able to see through that. You're not able to see the projections that you're putting onto him that you might be able to see with a friend or with some acquaintances or women from afar or people from afar that you're not tangled up with. It's much easier to see, oh yeah, I've got that. I, I've got that in me too. I know I, I know myself as being needy or judgmental. That makes sense. It's so much harder to do it with our husbands in our marriage. We're with them every day. We've become so enmeshed. We've become so codependent that it's almost impossible to see the things that are actually the experience of ourselves. It's, it's so hard to see that because our projections are so strong onto our husbands and we live through them every single day, all day long. Um, so again, we've built this bulletproof story that their behaviors are real and we constantly look for examples to prove why it's our husband that's the problem. So we don't have to see the things about ourselves that we don't like and have to change. And it's by living through this, it's by living through these projections that you create the symptoms in your relationship. So these are the symptoms that you get by living in projection in your relationship with your husband. You feel alone, unappreciated, used, and taken advantage of. There's no trust. You feel stuck. You don't see a way forward. There's a lack of intimacy. This is where you create distance because when you project on your husband and see him as the problem, you begin to guard yourself and put walls up. And from that place, you push him away and you create distance because you don't want to see yourself. You don't, well, that's what's going on underneath the surface. It's harder to, to understand that or be conscious of that, but you push him away because the projections you're putting onto him are the very things you don't want to see about yourself or know about yourself. So when you're living through your projections, you push them away and you create this distance and you crush your own happiness and your own zest for life because you're constantly focused on your husband. When you're constantly focused on your husband, ladies, and what he's doing to make the marriage what it is or, or what he's doing to make you unhappy, you're really hurting yourselves. You're crushing your own ability to have dreams and, and have a life you love because you're so focused and so caught in the problems that you're not focusing on yourself and the things that you have control over in your life to be empowered, to create a life you love. So you're really hurting yourself by living through your projections and thinking your husband is the problem. You're, you're cutting off life from yourself. And, and that's what I don't want. That's why I come on week after week after week to share this new perspective with you, for you to see things that you haven't been exposed to, that you're not looking and you're looking at within yourself. So you can do something to change and have a life you love. You don't have to stay in this place of, of feeling stuck and, and feeling alone and unappreciated and used and taken advantage of. There's a way out. I've been here. I pulled myself out of the quicksand um, and I'm here to, to reach a hand down to pull you out of the quicksand because there's a way. Um, and, and looking at projection and understanding what you're putting on your husband that's actually you, 
yeah, very vulnerable, very confronting, but very black and white cuts through the BS and gives you a path to change very, very quickly. And, and that's what I want for you. It's not about changing for your husband or changing for your marriage. I want you to change for yourself so that you can see how amazing you are and, and see the life that's possible for you that you can't see living in this. I know what it's like to be there. It's hell. And, and you don't have to be there anymore. Um, and, and that's, again, why we're talking about this is so you can see what you can change that you haven't been focused on because you've been focused, quite frankly, on all the wrong things. Um, that's why the books, the counseling, the podcasts, even these groups um, that you're a part of on Facebook, our group, other groups, seminars, they don't work. Um, because projection's not taken into consideration and you don't have the ability within yourself to see through your projections and break them down. And in and, and my group and the Authentic Married Woman, we're talking about these things. We're looking at these things because they're really important and nothing in your marriage is going to change until you work on these things. Um, but without the help to be able to see through your projections, this isn't going to do any good. You've got to be able to, to be guided, to be able to cut through your stories, that bulletproof story you have, to be able to cut through your projections and have someone show you the way or you're going to be stuck in this. Um, but therapy, marriage counseling doesn't take into consideration projection. Um, most therapists have not done their own work. They, they're buying into their own stories. They're, they're working with an outdated model. So they're not able to see these things within themselves. So they're not able to help their clients with these things. Um, so when you break down your projection of yourself, um, here's what, what you get. You can feel excited and hopeful again about your marriage, about your life, um, about your dreams. You, you reignite that hope and excitement in yourself for life, for your marriage, you get back that soulmate connection you feel like you've lost with your husband and you get back your soulmate connection with yourself, uh, which to me is that's that's where all the change happens is when you can get yourself back and get back that hope and excitement you have for yourself, for your own life. Uh, it's there. We've just got to bring it alive. Um, you can see your husband for who he really is. When I had all these projections on my husband. Oh my gosh, I painted this horrible picture of who he is. And I am married to an incredibly good man um, who is loving and thoughtful and caring. But when I had all my stories of projection and that's what I was living through, I saw him as checked out, withdrawn, no ambition. Um, and I was creating that experience. That was me. And so when I started to work through my projections and take ownership of myself and work on me, again, I started to feel good about myself and then projected that on my husband. And now I see how incredible he is, how strong he is, how he pushes me to be better in my own life. But I couldn't see that before. And you can't either uh, living through your projections. So you begin to see your husband for who he really is, the man that you married, the man you fell in love with. Um, you find freedom to be yourself, no more pretending, no more constantly covering up um, and, and putting the masks on and putting the facades on. You can just be yourself. Um, and then your husband's free to be himself too, which is a lovely experience to have in your relationship where you can both just be you and know that you're not perfect. He's not perfect, but you're both good people doing good things and doing the best that you can and have an appreciation for that. You can find joy in your life and your marriage again. Um, you can find your husband and your marriage is exactly where you want to be. And you can feel like newlyweds again with your husband. It's like getting to know each other all over again when you get to take those projections and see yourself and take those off of your husband. It, it reignites the spark and the connection. Think about all the things you don't like about yourself and how you're projecting that on your husband. How attracted do you think you're going to be to him? How, how much do you think you're going to want to be connected to him and be close to him and have intimacy? Not very much, not if at all. 
So you're you're stopping yourself by living this way and living through these project projections. So the solution, like I said, um, you can't break a projection down yourself uh, because the mind is so tricky and, and convinces us in so many different directions to protect ourselves that, um, and, and this is why you're so convinced that it's your husband. So it's impossible to break these down on your own in a way where you're getting to the depth in yourself that you need to get to, to be able to change. So you need to find a coach and a mentor to walk you through it. You need to find someone who's trained and, and able to bust through your stories and bust through the projections um, and, and a coach and mentor who works in that way, who works in projections. And then you need to decide that you're ready to do something about the pain you're experiencing in your marriage and in your life and be decisive and, and ready to change and commit to yourself and, and grab a hand that's trying to pull you up. You can grab my hand. I, I'm here to advocate for you, to pull you up from the hell that you are living in so you can be free to live your best life. Um, that's, that's my mission. That's what I'm here to do because I've been there and I had a couple of people reach their hands down and pull me up. And now I get to do the same for you. Um, so the solution is don't go it alone. If you go it alone, you will be alone and you'll just keep reading the books. You'll just keep doing the therapy. You'll see progress for a little bit and then you'll just end up in the same same issues again because you're not working with the root of the problem. And the root of the problem of what we're talking about today is projection, not being able to see that the things you see in your husband that bother you the most are the things you most don't, the things you don't like about yourself, the things that you deny and push down and, and don't want to see in yourself. Um, so you need someone to help break down that story to be able to see that so that you can make these changes and not live in this place anymore. You can get the connection back in your marriage. You can get the connection back to yourself. You just need help. You, you need someone to guide you in a, in a way that works and empowers you with the tools to be able to navigate your marriage, navigate your life in a constructive way where you continue to grow and feel good about yourself and cultivate inner happiness. So in wrapping up today, we we're talking about if you spot it, then you've got it. And what that means is that the things that you've seen your husband that bother you the most, if you can see them in him and they trigger you and they bother you and annoy you, then that means it's you and it's black and white. There's no wiggle room in that. Um, and, and that's empowering because then it allows you to look at the things in yourself that you need to change in order to have the marriage and life that you want. And so if you are listening and saying, oh, wow, yep, I've got a lot of projection. This makes sense to me. I know there's things I'm not seeing about myself. And I've been so lost and so caught up in how my husband is the problem that I've lost sight of myself and you're ready to do something about it, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of being in the spot that you're in in your marriage, feeling like roommates, feel like you're just going through the motions together, um, feeling like you've lost your soulmate and you don't want to be there anymore and you're decisive and you're committed and you're ready to change now and you're not going to live another day in this hell that you're, you're living in in your marriage, then I want you to go to a new lc.com forward slash talk and you can book a free breakthrough call with me um, and on this call i'm going to get you crystal clear on the real problems in your marriage and why you're doing what why what you're doing to solve these problems isn't working and show you what it's going to take to get the results that you want um, and, and that's what we will talk about on the call it's really to give we'll, we'll spend about an hour together getting you crystal clear getting you the clarity that you haven't been able to see. And then if you want to see if we're a good fit to work together, we can do that too. I am not a good fit for everyone. I probably, um, out of 10 calls, maybe only invite three to four women into uh, my course. Um, and, and so I'll be really honest with you if I can't talk to you. But even if not, I will give you some resources, give you some, some insight that you've been missing that can help you on your journey. And if you are a good fit and I can help you, then we'll talk about how. So again, you can go to a new lc.com forward slash talk and book a free call with me where we'll spend an hour together getting you crystal clear on what the real problems are, breaking down your projection, um, helping you see why what you're doing isn't working and what 
what you need to do to get the results that you want. And, and that's what we'll do together. So thank you all so much for joining and, and being who you are and being part of this group and making it possible. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I will be live again on Thursday uh, for a special interview with one of our past clients, Vivian. She's come on before and she is so insightful and has so many wonderful things to share about what she's been experiencing in her marriage and going after her dreams in her life. So we'll come on Thursday and, and have a, a, a nice conversation um, to give you some more insight on the things you're not looking at that are causing you to be stuck. Um, and, and showing you what you need to do to be able to move forward. So join me then. I'll make an announcement tomorrow on the time that will go on. And I hope you all have a great day and I will see you later in the week. All right, bye.